Hi, this is Steve and I'm with True Health and today I'm really excited about giving you a tour of what I have that are actually perennials and considered uh, permaculture plants that are actually going to help this garden space come back and actually thrive each year. So I think it's important to get on the permaculture train and actually do as much as possible. Of course I'm going to plant annuals in between these plants but around the perimeter of the property there's no reason why I can't have fruit trees and berries and all kinds of stuff that mixes into the landscape. So one of the things that I would be excited is for you to give me any comments of things that you may have be doing yourself that you would recommend are great experiences for a permaculture and give me some feedback in the comment sections. I would really love that. But I'm going to show you what I have and just go around the area and demonstrate what I planted so far, uh, what I know about some of the plants, and go that way. So let's get started. Some of the stuff I'm doing permaculture-wise is putting in rhubarb. So I've got some nice rhubarb plants here and that'll be awesome for pies or sauces or whatever. Okay, and back here I have what's called valerian and this valerian actually grows about eight feet tall. Um, at least it did last year and the roots actually smell like dirty socks but when you put it in say hot chocolate it actually has a calming effect so you can take those roots chop them up put them in hot chocolate and it'll actually uh, make you feel nice and calm at night and you can also throw in some uh, passion vine which hopefully is going to come back this year and so this is the valerian that i actually started by seed last year and it came up pretty well so i've got a few little plants that are gonna hopefully multiply and it's got a lot of competition in here i have to get rid of all of these blackberries that actually keep popping up so i'm going to be doing a lot of digging up roots so over here this is my goji berry plant and i've been bringing it from house to house and thank god we're staying here for a while um, this plant actually has been pretty forgiving and though I've moved it, um, it actually uh, went into shock uh, last year and I was thinking it wasn't going to survive and um, it's doing really great. So it's really leafing out, it's sending up some new pieces from the bottom and I've got actually some pieces that are trying to root into the ground which is awesome because I can make some um, new copies of this plant uh, and I'm actually uh, cloning these as well so I have a few clones that I produced and I'm gonna make cuttings off of that so in the future if you'd like some goji berry plants you can uh, contact me and I can send some to you so uh, I'll have a website that's coming up it's also for black goji berry plants that I've started and I'm gonna be selling those as well so that should be fun Okay, right here is another plant that uh, is perennial and it just comes back by itself. It's a very strong plant and you have to pull up a little bit of it. And it's called Lovage. Um, so each year it grows very strongly and uh, it actually tastes like a, between parsley and celery. Um, you can put it in soups and it's a great addition to soup to adding flavor, uh, but it can be a little bit pungent if you let it grow too long and start harvesting at that stage. So the springtime, I would say, is the best time to use this. And it actually has some cool um, flowers at the top um, when the summer gets going. So anyway, it's a great herb and yeah totally tastes like you're eating some celery when you eat some of the tender leaves on top if you get 
some of the leaves that have been going for a while. It's like, whew, can be a challenge, but um, you do want to use it a little bit sparingly. If you use it in soup, you don't want to put a ton in because it does have a lot of flavor. So let's move on to some other things. So over here, I've actually got a couple of black raspberries and they actually will grow quite a bit. I've bought these before at uh, previous houses and usually they'll sh uh, shoot up some canes that are about like six feet long and have awesome flowers on them. Uh, just really big white flowers followed by some actually huge berries on them. So I'm excited about these. I have a couple larger ones I bought at Home Depot and then I have some smaller ones over there. Eventually they'll probably get too big for this garden I can transplant some outside and create a nice row out of them. So that's my future plans for them. In the meantime I should get some berries uh, probably later this year. Um, and yeah, so excited about these. They come up every year. Um, you can move them around fairly easily. They're pretty forgiving and very excited about having those and I love the strong antioxidants that they actually have. The anthocyanins are really great for your health. So looking forward to that. So here's where I'm kind of prepping the area with wood chips and under the wood chips there's a lot of the straw that actually has the mycelium in there and uh, those wood chips are going to start decomposing faster because the mushroom material is under there and it's going to help uh, break it down. So this plant is comfrey and I have a real special connection to this. Um, a story that I have for it is I actually planted this as a kid. I don't know why I bought it and I was probably like nine years old when I bought it and the reason why I bought it is it could actually be used on the skin for many different reasons and it, one of the things that it explained is that if you make a poultice out of this it can actually heal ulcerous wounds on the body if you uh, wrap it around say like a leg. Now my mom had a lot going on with her health wise and she did have these sores um, on her legs that actually um, were getting almost necrotic so uh, it was actually kind of eating into her legs so I made a poultice out of this years later when she was um, dying of cancer but she was having so much problems with her legs and I just took this and uh, kind of like ground it up made a poultice out of it wrapped it around her legs and I would say her legs got like 50 60 percent better and it's amazing that nine year nine years old I actually wanted to get this I don't know what drew me to it but then later someone actually explained that I could uh, use this on her legs and um, it actually made her feel so much better. So that felt amazing to me and the power of plants is actually really incredible. So this is another cool plant here and this is called Turkish Rocket and it's actually a type of wild broccoli and it has these kind of like saber tooth like leaves if I can uh, get this a little bit closer so you can see. And uh, these leaves are edible. They're a little bit hairy. But when you cook them, that goes away. So at this stage, early on, they taste really good. And you can eat these leaves. They taste a little bit peppery before they get cooked. But you can taste that broccoli taste as well. So it's uh, really wild. But in the next few weeks this is going to put up some shoots that look entirely like broccoli because they are related uh, to broccoli and those can be uh, picked and eaten fresh and uh, they're like little broccoli florets that get about this 
this big. Um, so this will have a bunch of those and then they flower and oh my god they produce a lot of little seeds little little babies and if you're going to try to start them uh, by seed one of the best ways uh, I would say is like if you do get one of these plants to grow the next year they're going to spawn a lot of little babies one of the cool things about this plant the Turkish rocket is it can go down many many feet into the soil and I've heard as much as like 10 to 20 feet and actually helps crack rock which is the um, same type of thing that the comfrey can actually do too so it actually pulls a lot of minerals and also the good thing is that this plant in the summertime it could be dry as anything and you could have not gotten rain for like weeks and this is actually pulling all kinds of moisture from down below so this is a plant you'll always have if you want it and uh, it's just incredible like how strong it is and I would say that it, it must be more uh, potent mo more powerful than broccoli itself so this wild relative is actually very cool love this plant I've got a lot of little babies and I might uh, be selling these as well because they are volunteering themselves all over the place. They're easy to uh, get up at this stage. Um, and uh, yeah, so look for that uh, coming online soon. Okay, this is uh, one thing that I really, really like that's in the garden. And I had planted onions in my raised beds and for some reason they didn't do as well as I had hoped but if you're looking for the taste of onions and you're looking for the taste of almost uh, like the bunching onions one of the things that really works well is the Welsh onion this baby is such a strong onion and it comes up every year and you can use it um, just like you would the bunching green onions that you get in the store and you can cut these back a few inches from the soil and they will keep coming up again and again all summer long uh, which is something that is really cool uh, so I've got a few patches of this and they kind of spread out over the course of time and really well worth it if you got have things that come up each year and you don't have to till the soil to actually like work it or replant the seed. This is something that comes back every year. Here we are at the winter hardy kiwi vine trellis that I made. And uh, this was something I had as a kid that I had planted. I got in a magazine and it was uh, quite the cool looking plant. I got a male and a female version of this. And the male actually produces uh, leaves eventually that are both red white and green and it's beautiful when it actually gets going and so it had a little hard time last year actually transplanting over here but it's starting to really take off which I'm really excited about it also I've got a smaller one over here that I dug up as well um, so hopefully they there will be some kiwi this year if there isn't, it's because I've got two males over here and it's starting to look like that's a possibility. But at least these will get going really strongly. I can add a female to it. And you only need a ratio of like one male to about 10 like female plants if you're gonna grow a lot of this winter hardy kiwi. And if you've never seen these, they produce like little grape sized kiwi that are fuzzless and they actually taste pretty pretty good um, so really excited about these and they grow so incredibly fast I bought this really cool one that has even more colorful leaves but I had guinea hens and they crapped all over it throughout the whole entire winter um, so I dug that out it's still kind of surviving and I hope it actually uh, takes off but if you're doing permaculture, even if you let this go wild in the background, this eventually will take over a large space and will actually give you a lot of fruit.
this little plant here has taken a beating on moving from one location to another, one house to another. And <clears throat> this is uh, Shizandra. And Shizandra is called like the five flavored fruit. And it actually has like a uh, bitter, salty, sweet, sour, and I'm kind of forgetting the other one. So when you take one of the berries and you put it in your mouth, it's, all, it's kind of something like you would see in the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where they put that piece of candy in the mouth and it goes through all these flavor changes. <laughs> and it tastes something like that where it's actually the salty, sweet, sour, bitter um, flavors. But it's so good for your health. So I'm trying to grow, grow this. I'm really excited that I actually made it through the winter and it's coming back. And all I need to do to help it survive really well is again to get some of these blackberry bushes out of here. I wish I had like a big heavy duty machinery that could go through here. So I'm trying to uh, work that out this year. Anyway, this is gonna be something to watch in the future because when it flowers, it actually has all of these like chains of flowers that come down and that's uh, where it produces all of its berries. So it is pretty cool. This is an awesome permaculture plant that could be very good for your health. So look up Shizandra. There's some actually uh, really good videos on YouTube about Shizandra and the benefits of it. Hey, so here's my gooseberry plant. And this is actually looking pretty good. It has a lot of flowers on it. Um, the only problem with the gooseberry plant, I think I'm going to try to protect it this year because it seemed like a lot of the birds and a lot of the creatures that are outside really love the gooseberries on this and they actually ate a lot of them. So it's not a huge bush to cover, but it's worth covering because the berries, I think, are so tasty on it. So this is another permaculture plant, another perennial plant that I think is really amazing and it's also in the same family as the vine that we just came from it is a type of gooseberry and also um, the winter hardy kiwi is a type of gooseberry as well so um, they are awesome it's a nice little bush and it's something that uh, looks good in your landscape as well but here we are in the red raspberry patch and this is doing really well um, I'm really excited about the raspberries. I got these in little containers and they were on a really good deal last year. Um, I planted these and I got them for a cheap rate of like $4 per plant. And a lot of times you have to pay about $30 for the plant. So this was a real awesome uh, find at one of the stores. And I have about six plants right now and they are volunteering themselves the babies are actually creeping into new locations, so hopefully I can expand this in like about a 10, 15 foot area and get a lot of raspberries off of these. They had a decent amount for their uh, first year last year, so they did really well. Something that I think is a really good uh, plant for permaculture and is a perennial that'll come up each year and give you more and more each year if you take care of them right. So um, if you cut back the canes and do that correctly, uh, you're doing really well. But there'll be more information on this and I'll show some really good scenes when these are producing in uh, future months. Okay, this is my aronia bush, also called chokeberry. And it had some awesome berries on it last year. I mean, they do have a little bit of pucker power that is for sure but their antioxidant level is huge and they produce a very dark berry and right now it is getting ready to flower out it has all these like little clumps of uh, buds on it and it's doing really quite well really psyched about this and I want to find a few more to put in with it this year but man you can make some good stuff out of the aronia 
blackberry juice. So this is a great perennial that will come up each year and is a powerhouse of antioxidants. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it's shown a little bit about what's going on in the garden and this is going to be a progression over time and I think that it's going to get so incredibly great as time goes on because I'm going to add more of the permaculture type plants and if you have any suggestions of things that you've done for perennials that come up each year that can add to a permaculture landscape please let me know I would like any suggestions any mentions of new plants that would be really cool so thanks again for watching this and I just want to say that if you do like this video please hit the like and subscribe buttons it would do me a big favor to grow the channel so thanks so much see you again soon in a future video